This is a rebuild of uh, a Curry Electro Drive brushless hub motor uh, from that wheel there. <clears throat> um, this was on one of my bikes and it, it started making a horrible noise and it looks like the water's got in there um, and the magnets have detached. So three of the four poles uh, have got marking on them and I presume what's happening is that uh, that's dragging on the stator um, and not developing any torque. So it was limiting out on current and not going anywhere. So uh, I've uh, re-glued the magnets on, I've tested the coils and they're all reading the same uh, same resistance. Um, my meters don't go to milliohms so I've put a battery across them and measured the current and they're all the same and they're all uh, showing about about two ohms. So um, hopefully uh, that's all it was. We can get this back together, give it a clean up, and uh, hopefully it'll spin. Well, we shall see what happens. Um, and as long as it does spin, I shall work out how all the clutch and locator pins um, and outer clutch outer ring all went back together. Which I uh, I did take a a reasonable interest, but I thought the uh, motor was had it, so uh, well not that much of an interest. Um, all this was connections I made previously. Um, when I first got this hub motor, it was uh, it was very very cheap on eBay because someone had uh, very cleverly cut everything off. So um, anyway, they're all spliced. They're, they've been working okay. So a good fast motor, this um, some sort of in runner with a, a very because uh, this is your drive um, uh, center pinion there. So it's an in runner, and you get a multiplier from this diameter to the clutch outer diameter via the three rollers, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's got a lot of torque on this. Um, it's quite a high performance motor, it's better than the other hub motors I've had. And it's very very small and discreet, which is handy. Right, I'm going to put this back together uh, off video because I'm holding this in my hand, and um, we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, watch this space. Right, so we've epoxied for the second time because the first time the epoxy didn't go off. One five one epoxy didn't go off. So I found the Araldite, much coveted Araldite. Um, little bit of over spill is in the gap, so it's a bit stiff, but with a bit of uh, running that should just sort itself out. So uh, I shall uh, pop this back in, um, bolt it up, and, and give it a test. Right, but this is a two-hand job, and I've got the phone in my hand, so I shall put this down a second. Right, so there we are, back together. Um, <clears throat> now that's meant to have the uh, three uh, rollers in here, which will act as a bit of a, uh, a bearing as well. So it's only got one bearing in the middle. Uh, it's unsupported around the magnet, so it may not be perfect. Um, but it is, it is uh, symmetrical, so it should be okay. Right, so we've got controller set up um, with the hole sensors and three phases on got measurement on one of the phases and I am on AC so that's good and I've got the learn wires connected so once I turn the power on that will go into learn mode so a little look at that hopefully it will work Well, that sounds a lot better than it did uh, before. Two amps. I'm not really sure what the no load current's meant to be on this, because I've never run it no load. Can we manage to do that one handed? Probably not. No, I just look like an idiot trying to do this. Right, we shall pause it again and uh, get it on throttle. Right, so we've got throttle connected and this should be okay. Let's have a look. Happy days! What am? One amp. Good throttle. Right, that'll do. Let's have a bit of a rebuild. Well, that was quite fiddly. But uh, managed to get it in. So I thought these were bearings, but they're not. They're just plain uh, D 
discs. So they're running against the inside with this this lipped. Now I think this must be the clutch. It has to be the clutch because there's nothing else. Uh, mind you, I say that there's another piece. Might be the clutch. It's covered in grease in a minute. Clean it up in a bit. So you've got the centre drive for the motor. And that's a heck of a reduction. Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe five mil. And this is. 80 so 16 to 1 reduction probably so this is probably why this is a pretty good motor um, that'll be running at rel relatively high speed and a good reduction 12 of these little pins in each one so there's some washers to go over the top of those uh, and then the uh, the outer plate so uh, yes I shall pop this back together now and uh, we'll give it a test run um, yeah the, I, I think they might struggle to make a make a clutch in that Probably the outer basket, but it's definitely one or the other because there's nothing else. Right, so I fitted the uh, the outer plate. <clears throat> now I've left the washers out because the pins are uh, are coming through. Uh, where's my finger in relation to this camera? There we go. Um, the pins that are, uh, are coming through they interfere with the with the plate with the washer in between. Uh, hold all those little pin bearing pins in. Um, now this is still. A little bit offset from here. Uh, again, this on is not easy. Uh, it's all interference fit, so um, it was uh, tapped on with a mallet. Now it was before I put the little pins in. With I'm putting the pins in, they could go everywhere. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the motor, rotate this, and just keep this under a little bit of tension. Now the reason I've got the washers in there is because they'll just come out of alignment and come slightly out of the way. So um, yeah, we should do it with the um just with this plate just to put a little bit of uh tension on this and uh oh i'm left-handed so i shall just swap this just a little bit of tension and then we'll get it rotating and use the foot switch there we go we'll just get this down get the pins to just sit proud I'm not going to tighten this down as such. Don't drop a screwdriver in there, that will be messy. There we go. Right. There we go, we're off. So take this off. And uh, that will mean that those three pins will have stuck out. Doing this through the viewfinder, so it's a bit awkward. <clears throat> viewfinder? This is a phone. <laughs> I guess it's a viewfinder of a fashion. Oh, there we go. That lifted off a touch awkward because the pins are through the hole. Right, there we go. And we got the three washers. Oh, this uh, that disc is the clutch. The inner basket uh, moves one way, so that's. Uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be that way because the ring on the outer of this motor, the reduction ring, is just. Uh, I wouldn't like to try and build a clutch in that. That'd be ridiculous. Anywho, so right, we're in, and that is still doing this through the viewfinder, so it's still awkward. Right, so we shall take these up. I'm going to do this properly, so I'm going to put this video down for a minute, and then we'll get the clutch on, and then it can go uh, back in the body. And uh, with any luck, we've got a motor back, which we thought was wrecked. Right, so um, the clutch plate, it's just got two pins uh, that locate on the ring, and... Uh, that one just pops in, hopefully, again using the viewfinder which is not very handy. How about using eyes? There we go, right, so we're in. So uh, that all then feeds back in the hub, I'll need a couple of hands to do that, so uh, I shall knock this on the head again. And um, yeah, that's it, hopefully uh, that'll work. Yeah, the outer plate, um, 
which is over here, has got no six holes. So unless you've got the screws in there, um, it doesn't drive. So you can just uh, test run it, which is quite handy, I guess. So uh, we'll we will test run it in situ. Give this a clean up as well. And um, yeah, we're good to go. Get the wheel back together then. Get it back on the bike and uh, see if the magnets uh, hold under under stress. Um, might leave it another day though. Give that epoxy, make sure it cures nicely. Um, there we go. Right, good. Carry on. Right, so uh, that's it together. The other thing that uh, uh, I didn't mention before is uh, there's flats on the uh, on the spindle ends, and there's three ways that that uh, that, that one goes in. So you got to get that right, um, which I did. Uh, although <laughs> I had to go back and check. Anyway, so um, yep, that's uh, that's all in. So that just screws screws on, and when you're pedaling, that will tighten it up. And are we getting in? Oh, we're not getting in. So we're not home. All right, we're home now. One-handed, not good. Right, there we go. Such is life. Right, so in fact, I tell you what I'll do is I will line those screws up because. Then I can do it with one hand. Do the viewfinder again. Stupid. That's for the sake of the video. So that's all that's uh, holding the drive on this is these these six screws, um, <laughs> which is well, that's what it's designed to do. So that's what it's going to do. Now, of course. The testing of this now needs to be back in the bike, or at least, whoops, where I'm clamping the, uh, clamping the spindle. God, get this down at a better angle. Should do this in the horizontal. There we go. Right, I'm going to need a 2-2, two -two. you get the idea. Do the other ones off camera. So that's it. We're all back together. And uh, I'll get a bit of heat shrink on that now. And um, back to normal. The whites are spare. Um, I had to re-cable re this. And it was one of those extension leads that you buy with the, the odd number of pins. The big three pins and five little pins. Um, at least I think it was. Pretty sure it was. So yeah, I've just done that manually really. Into uh, at least having these means I can get the heat shrink over them rather than that big block, and you've got no chance of taking it all out. Right, next next time I uh, get on this, we'll be back in the bike and on the test. Thank you. Yeah, all back together. Um, the the whole idea of uh, when I started messing out with this bike again because it's been uh, dormant for about a year is uh, to put the um, what do you call it? The the cadence sensor on it. So it's been dormant for a year with, with uh, without me cleaning it. Anyway, never mind. Um, it'll get clean. So I rebuilt a cadence sensor that is there. Um, it didn't work. Um, I fitted it with a whole sensor, uh, one of the bipolar type that you get in the uh, in the motors. Uh, right, fiddly little soldering job it was, but uh, yeah, we've got it sorted. Now, this particular chain wheel will not fit the disc uh, with the magnets on it, so all I've done is I have glued, not I haven't glued, I've literally just magnet stuck them on uh, for the time being, but they will get glued. Um, and I think there's five on the disc. I've put two on because I tend to pedal quite fast. And I don't really want um, this thing taking off like a gazelle just because I'm uh, pedaling quickly. So anyway, it's a, it's a cyst. So we'll see what happens. I might put three on, might put four on. Um, <coughs> depends how many places there are. It's, it's four. Well, it's either two or four, isn't it? Well, we'll soon find out. Anyway, motor. Motor time.
And now she spins. And the good thing, the good thing about this pedal X system that's on this controller is that it's proportionate to how fast you're pedaling. Whereas some in the past I've had, uh, when I had a uh, Green Edge CS2, you just turn the pedals and it would take off, and it's a nightmare. Um, it would just end up you try and pull out of a junction and uh, it just pushes you wide just because the, the motor wants to kick in. Anyway, so this is proportionate, so that should be helpful. Um, and because this is pre-2016, this bike, I'm perfectly legally entitled to have a thumb throttle. And there we go. So, yeah, it looks like uh, successful... Yeah, successful repair, and um, we'll put it under proper load, and hopefully the magnets won't uh, decide to uh, disappear again into the ether. So, um, yeah, there we go. I'm uh, quite chuffed about that, because I thought that one was uh, beyond saving.